Welcome to College Basketball Arenas, where I recap every arena I visit throughout the season. Today we head to Horton Fieldhouse, the home of Redbird basketball from 1963 through 1988, and where the Redbirds just returned for a turn back the clock game after a 34 year hiatus. The board approved construction of a new PE building in January 1961. This was back when ISU was still named Illinois State Normal University, which would be its name until 1964. Pictured here is the groundbreaking ceremony in December 1961. The building would be named for Dr. Clifford Pop Horton, the athletic director from 1923 through 1961. Horton's predecessor, McCormick Gymnasium, was built in 1923 for a student body of 1,013 students. Enrollment was now over 6,000 here in 1962. ISU was going through an enrollment boom where the goal to hit 6,000 students by 1968 was actually hit by 1962. In fact, they ended up hitting 10,000 enrollment by 1968. Enrollment had to be temporarily capped at 6,500 as ISU negotiated with Bloomington Normal homeowners to save 900 rooms due to dormitory overflow. Horton would be constructed at a $2 million construction cost. That was part of a $4.5 million project that included Hancock and other things. Of that $2 million, $1.5 million came from state bond revenue allocation, and $500,000 came from the Board of Regents selling revenue bonds, which were supported by student fees. And pictured here, you can see Horton Fieldhouse and Hancock Stadium being built simultaneously. Horton Fieldhouse would be dedicated in October 1963, and the first game would be December 4, 1963, versus the Indiana State Sycamores. Horton Fieldhouse would serve other purposes such as commencements, home shows, concerts, community events, and special occasions like honoring MLK after his assassination. The red bleachers with white markers for seats in this 1964 photo looked exactly the same in the 2022 Return to Horton game. I cannot confirm whether they're the same, but they look like them. The concrete seating in Horton Fieldhouse would account for 3,000. The original capacity of the stadium would be 5,361. Peak capacity, as they added bleachers, would be 8,500. And then later capacity was 7,745, although that would adjust upward and downward throughout the years. Horton hosted the first ever Women's Basketball National Championship in 1972, won by the Immaculata Mighty Max. It was the first Women's National Championship, as the first NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament would not be held until 10 years later in 1982, making this 1972 AIAW Tournament the first Women's National Championship. It's always interesting to look at old attendance record, and these Old newspaper clippings from the Vedette show the average attendance in the early years of Horton. In 66, it averaged 2,000, then 4,267, then 5,768, then 4,869, then 5,571, 6,972, and 7,673. And capacity at the time of this article in 73 was 8,200. He's consensus All-American and Olympic star, Doug Collins. Following his final home game, a sellout crowd stayed on to say goodbye to the guy whose name is opposite every I-State scoring record. It was an emotional moment. And as he spoke to the crowd, the fans remembered all the thrills he had given them in his brilliant career. If I had the decision to choose whether to go to college again, it would be Illinois State. Horton Fieldhouse was home to college basketball history between Will Robinson and Doug Collins. Will Robinson was the first African-American head coach in NCAA Division I history when he became the Redbirds coach in 1970. Robinson retired in 1975, became scout for the Detroit Pistons, discovered Dumars and Rodman, and actually turned down the Pistons head coaching job that went to Chuck Daly, who later won two NBA titles. The number one overall draft pick in the 1973 NBA draft was Doug Collins of Illinois State for the Philadelphia 76ers. Collins was a 1972 Olympic silver medalist while attending ISU, 
He was a first-team All-American, a four-time NBA All-Star, and a head coach of the Chicago Bulls, Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, and Philadelphia 76ers. In fact, the 76ers once played the Bulls in a preseason game in October 1974, dubbed the Return of Collins. Ticket prices were $4 for adults, $3 for students. And in this photo, you can tell by the white shorts that that's the Bulls uniform. And then number 35 in the dark uniform is Doug Collins. Interestingly, the uniforms that the 76ers are wearing here look a lot like Illinois State's uniforms. And Doug Collins was number 20, not number 35. So I wonder if ISU gave alternate uniforms to the 76ers to wear for the return of Collins. This newspaper clipping from the Vedette in 1976 shows what ticket prices were back then. For season tickets, it was $42 for reserved. $30 for general admission, and $17 for youth. For single game tickets, it was $3.50 for reserved, $2.50 for general admission, and $1.50 for youth. On February 3, 1977, inside Horton Fieldhouse, Illinois State upset number 4 ranked UNLV 88-84 before a sellout crowd of 8,000. UNLV coach Jerry Tarkadian was quoted, at the time, I said Horton was the toughest place I've played in, and that was probably the wildest crowd I've seen. But that kind of thing is great for college basketball. The fans at ISU are great, and that's what college basketball is all about. On March 12, 1983, Illinois State defeated Tulsa inside Horton Fieldhouse to win the Missouri Valley Championship and clinch their first NCAA tournament. This would be the only game from Horton Fieldhouse televised on CBS. The lighting inside Horton was so poor, CBS had to put in special lights. Like UNLV coach Jerry Tarkanian, Tulsa coach Nolan Richardson also had some words for Horton Fieldhouse. Following a Tulsa overtime win over Illinois State one year, Nolan Richardson was quoted, It's a great feeling. You don't win in this building very often. This is probably one of the greatest buildings in the country to play in. To come and win at Horton Fieldhouse? is maybe one of the greatest highlights of my career because I guarantee it, there won't be many victories in this building. This place is a zoo, a great zoo, a bigger and better zoo. This crowd is one of the finest crowds in basketball. There's just no question about it. And not only are they a fine crowd, they're knowledgeable of the game. They understand the game. When we come in here, this is a great crowd. And regardless of whether we win or lose, that's one thing, but I still have to say this is the finest crowd in college basketball. Following Illinois State's first NCAA tournament in 1983, ticket demand was so sky high that students camped out in a tent by Horton Fieldhouse for two weeks, alternating three to four hour shifts and even enduring a flooded tent to ensure they were first in line for half court seats in JJ and KK. Incredibly, 22 tents of students camped out the night before season tickets went on sale. The ISU-Bradley rivalry was at its height in the 1980s as the War on 74 sold out the entire decade of the 1980s. Hundreds of ISU students would wear white cotton wigs to impersonate Bradley coach Dick Versace. ISU students had some colorful chants for Versace, although Versace once responded by shaking their hands. ISU coach Bob Donawalt chased Bradley students out of Horton Fieldhouse one time because he thought they were videotaping his team. At one press conference during the week of the war on 74, Donawald noticed a cameraman from a Peoria news station wearing a Bradley shirt underneath his jacket and stopped the press conference until he exited. A 1984 newspaper clipping from the Vedette lists the renovations that had taken place at Horton. In 1975, there were four track repairs for 171,000. In 1976, there were roof repairs for 73,000. And in 1983, there were renovations on the electronic systems for 265,000, although that price included Hancock Stadium. On September 14, 1985, Michael Jordan played in a charity event at Horton Fieldhouse. Admission was $5 for adults and $3 for students and youth. The proceeds went towards the new ISU arena and the local Special Olympics. Originally, ISU had $750,000 in excess bond revenue that they planned to use to enlarge seating at Horton. But when the university architect 
showed models and projections that it would not be cost efficient, the decision was then made to push for a new arena. When Horton was proposed in 1959, ISU had 32 enrollment, and by the time it was built, four years later in 63, ISU had 6,600 enrollment. When Redbird Arena was proposed in 83, it had 18,000 enrollment, and then one year later when Redbird Arena proposal passed in 84, it skyrocketed to 21,000 enrollment. One pitch to build a new arena was that Horton was not suitable for big name acts, and one newspaper clipping cited ISU missing out on Michael Jackson and Frank Sinatra and ZZ Top because Horton Fieldhouse was either occupied or it wouldn't hold enough people. Another clipping says that concert promoters within the industry considered Horton to be an obsolete aluminum barn. Concert promoters also deemed Horton acoustically poor and said that Horton lacked some simple things never thought about 25 years ago, such as an entrance from the dressing room to the stage and power outlets not being readily available. ISU coach Bob Donawal wrote an article in the Vedette 1984 pitching his case. Some of the things in here include the North Bleachers being a little dangerous and Horton Fieldhouse being ranked lower than 47th overall of the 53 teams in the 1984 NCAA tournament. He also says late in the 1984 MVC season that his team was unable to get the floor to practice at Horton for necessary game preparation because the facility was overbooked. Horton was in constant use from 5.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily, and a lot of the schedule would be frequently disrupted because dismantling the 3,100-seat North Bleachers and then putting them back up again was time-consuming. Donawal also said that the view of the playing floor from the North Bleachers was so bad that he would never buy a North Bleacher seat ticket to watch his own team play. On April 25, 1984, the ISU students voted yes for a new arena by a vote of 2,430 to 2,217. 52% to 48%. Along the ball goes out of bounds, belonging to DePaul. Four seconds left. The Blue Demons have another shot. That could have been a break there for the Blue Demons. Four seconds left. Foster will inbound sideline. And to Terrence Green. Green puts it up at the buzzer. It's good. A three-pointer! Darren Green wins it! A three-pointer, and DePaul wins this one! 78-77! What a finish! Darren Green, with no time left on the clock, hit a three-pointer, and the DePaul Blue Demons pull it out! 78-77! And what a happy group of DePaul Blue Demons as they exit the floor! They're going the wrong way! They're so excited! We're going the wrong way to the locker room. Here's T. Green gets and the ball in. This is a Hail Mary if I've ever seen one. Here it is. He'll finish. Oh, he's oh, look, he was line. inside the line. He was inside He two was three. inside the line. No way that's a three-point play. There is no way. You're absolutely right. He no. will finish with 25 points. Terrence Green finishes with 25 points. We'll take another look at the play. John here it is inside the line. Well, I don't know how they could miss this. This one's not even close. I didn't think it was a three-point play. If we let he's stepping away. Now, let's see who makes the call. Let's see who makes the call here. And the final the score. 78-77 to Paul. Back in a moment. The final game at Horton would be on December 3, 1988, a 2.30 p.m. start on WGN. You can see by the sign in this photo that says, Welcome Second Annual Final Home Game at Horton, that it was originally believed that the previous year would be the final home game at Horton, but Redbird Arena was not on time for construction, so the final game at Horton was pushed back to the following season in December. ISU would lose to DePaul 78-77. The Redbirds were up 77-75 with four seconds left when a ball called out of bounds on ISU actually went off DePaul. 
and then at the buzzer, DePaul's buzzer beater was called a three-pointer when both feet were inside the line. After that robbery, you can see why ISU wanted a do-over 34 years later. Overall, at Horton Fieldhouse, ISU went 267-68, in 68, winning 80% of their games and losing only 20%. The Redbirds scored three top 10 wins at Horton. On February 3, 1977, they knocked off number 4 UNLV, coached by Jerry Tarkadian, 88-84. On January 21, 1978, they knocked off number 4 ranked Indiana State Sycamores, led by Larry Bird, 81-76. And on March 3, 1984, the Redbirds knocked off number 9 Tulsa and coach Nolan Richardson, 91-81. And now the return to Horton after 34 years on December 10, 2022. Fans could pay $100 for pregame lunch with the legend, Doug Collins, inside Horton. Inside the arena, he made famous. Collins is still an avid Redbird basketball fan today, returning to campus every year.
tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until i look away but i've known you too long it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, I have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never fell this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away Yeah.